Ha ha! Dinky dooby hearties, a very good morning to you. It's just me, Scotty McClue, with a quick pop-up to see how all of you are doing. It's 20 minutes to 11 o'clock on Saturday the 22nd of January. 22 minutes to 11 o'clock, of course, that means in the morning. We're on UK time, which is Greenwich Mean Time. That's where we are at the moment, so dinky do. Uh, there's Kareem, Scotty Dinky Doo, it's you. How are we today? We are outstanding, Kareem, and I hope you are as well, because it's just lovely to be able to touch base for a wee while on a Saturday morning, and of course to let everybody know that tonight at 9 o'clock is the internet phone in on the Scotty McClure YouTube channel. There we are, Dinky Doo. Hello, Ryan. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty Dinky Doo. I'm Welsh too. Well, I'm not actually Welsh, Clodagy, but I'd say to you, Yakida. And uh, lovely to have you with us, Dinky Do. And Aborada. Uh, you don't even sound Scottish. Well, that's a good thing, Oscar, isn't it? There we are. Because this is the way Scottish people speak. So you obviously don't have much experience of Scottish people. Fat like Scotty, I, Robbie, Dinky Do. You sound Welsh. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not actually Welsh. You see, there we are from the valleys. I'm out tonight, Scotty. I need to de-stress, but I'll try and call. I have an amazing question for you. Karim, please never give it a thought. You do need to de-stress. Very important with the wonderful job that you do. There we are. Oscar the Labrador. Dinky do. I got family in Glasgow. Are you Irish, says Clodicky? Well, we're all Irish to a greater or lesser extent, Clodicky. You see? Buns soon, absolutely twiggy. And I'll be doing something, a Buns Night special. Scotty McClure will maybe give you some of the old favourites. I thought you would enjoy that. How good is that? Popeye the Sailor says, Dinky Doo. Tam says, Good morning to all. Good morning, Tam. How lovely to have you with us. Are you Captain Birdseye? Oh, yes. You should smell my fish fingers. There we are. Follow us as soon as you can, guys. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, so there we go. I don't know what you're talking about. No, thank you, Robert. Uh, I've never actually met one of those. So there you are. So we'll have to leave you with that one. Lovely to have everybody with us and a very, very warm welcome. You're watching TikTok's Top Talk Show. Remember to follow me as soon as you come on, guys. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's big boy Roy, who says he is a fruit loop. There we are. Well, I'll uh, leave that up to you. I'll let you come to that inescapable conclusion, big boy Roy. Have you changed the room about? No, nope, not really. Everything's just as was. But what I might do, if you watch this, I'll see if I can do this for you and then that might help ah does that look better there you are you see that's all you need to do follow us as soon as you come on guys yeah say hi to julie from me scotty i will see you no problem thank you for your lovely red rose and all your gifts you beautiful beautiful generous tiktokers it's so very much appreciated ah the car was on the other side has that just moved around there then uh, do let us know what is what, I say to you, and uh, a very good dinky do to you. So when I just pressed that there, did that change things around? There you are. Follow us. Thank you, Sean, for your follow. Very, very important. I think it's quite easy to follow, guys. You just uh, pop up to the top left and click the plus. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Spook. How are you getting on? Nice to have you with us and a big dinky do to Spook. There we are, Saturday morning, nothing gets past me, hashtag flow time. There we are, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and the world's most humble man. I can only say I'm the world's top broadcaster if I'm also the world's most humble man, just in case anybody thought I was blowing my own trumpet, and we don't want any of that. So there you are, dinky doo, good morning, Scotty. TV, burp. How lovely to have you with us. Big dinky do to you too. Thank you, Spook. So good to have everybody on here. We like that. There's uh, Kenya. 
Is that Kenya? Kenya has joined us. Are you Scottish? Got it in one, Trent. Well done. Fantastic. There we are. It's always a bit difficult, isn't it, to work out where's this guy from? He sounds Scottish, but I'll just check. That's what it's all about, I'd say. So there we go. Thank you for joining us, Dinky Do. Yes, we are Trent. And where are you from, Trent? Are you from the Trent? Because you might remember Scotty McClue. Have you ever been to Crookston Castle? Yes, I have, Spook, and I knew it. Just off the car, Donald, there. You sound posh. No, I don't think we're posh. Scottish and posh. Well, is every Scot not sound posh? Being Scottish is probably, if there was such a thing as posh, which I don't think there is nowadays, then I think being Scottish is the equivalent of being posh, regardless of who you are or where you're from or whatever. What have I just scrolled to, says Gemma. Gemma, you have scrolled to Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, TikTok's top talk show. Get following and enjoy every second of it, Gemma. Good day, Scotty Dinky Doo. Never scroll and never troll away from Scotty McClue, or you miss a moment of life. You miss a moment of life. That's not good for you. Follow us as soon as you come on. Thank you, Trent Wills. Thank you, Sandwich Face. There we are. What a great thought, Sandwich Face. Uh, you are posh and I'm Scottish. No, Mark. This is what we do in Scotland. So you're posh. There we are. Follow us as soon as you possibly can. Every Scot is posh. There's Susan in Lancashire. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Susan. How lovely to hear from you. Fantastic. What uni did you go to? I went to Glasgow Uni. Glasgow in the west of Scotland. There we are. Um, how are you, my friend? I am absolutely dinky do Liz. So nice to hear from you. You're straight up the most interactive streamer I've come across. Leslie, what a lovely, lovely thing to say. We enjoy interactivity and we love hearing from all our fellow TikTokers. If you have a TikTok account, you should be following Scotty McClue. In fact, if you've got an internet connection, you should be following Scotty McClue on TikTok and subscribing to the YouTube channel. There we are. Scotty McClue, the internet phone in. What's your net worth? I think my net worth, James, runs into uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of love. That's what it's about. So you can't put a price on my net worth because there's so much love. There's so much joy. There's so much fun. There's so much laughter. How do you actually price that? Do you see what I mean? So that's what we need to find out. I'm from London. Trent, we love you in London. What a nice part of the world. I used to live in London. There we are. And... Uh, What's your favourite castle that you own? Ooh, you've got me there, sandwich face. There we are. Uh, surely your mind doesn't think the way your voice sounds. Well, it has done for a long, long time. There we are. And uh, are you the scooter from the radio? Yes, indeed, I am from the radio. Do you have a wife, Trent? Don't be ridiculous. Who would have me? Dinky do, Scotty. I used to listen to your radio station in the 90s. Great to hear your banter again. I thank you, sir. Dark Angle says, good morning. There we are. Thoughts on Russia attacking Ukraine. I'm worried I may get conscripted as a 21-year-old. Well, what's going on at the minute? Russia hasn't actually attacked Ukraine. It has massed and amassed it's forces at the border. Now, uh, this is what you call saber rattling. And I would hope that uh, Mr. Putin and Mr. Biden and uh, Mr. Ukrainian and everybody has got the common sense to uh, leave it at that, you know. But uh, we shall see. Is it true there's nothing under the kilts apart from a giant haggis? Sandwich face, I shall leave that up to you to imagine. There we are. Meant to say Scotty, not Scooter. Are you the Scotty from the radio? Ah, sorry, Mark. I thought maybe a Scooter was a term of endearment. Oh, he's a, 
he's a scooter. Like you say about some people in Glasgow, we say, oh, he's an absolute rocket. There we go. You're worth over £7 million. Pounds. All right. Oh, well, that's £6,999,999. Pounds more than I've got on me. So that's good. I'll need to go to the cash machine. What's your views on Zionism? Well, hard, clear Zionism. You know, I mean, I don't think that's terribly popular. I think really, if uh, we're not careful, Israel could be kind of left there. Scotland doth hath a green and pleasant land. Very much so. Do you play golf? No, I don't. And my wee black Labrador. I got a phone call one night because it disappeared on a walk. And the walk was not far from the golf course. And this voice said, have you lost a wee black Labrador? I said, oh, yes, have you got him there? Is he behaving? He went, oh, no, really. Uh, we're on the golf course. And what little Clyde he was doing, when they drove off down the fairway, about, what, a couple of hundred yards if you're a good golfer, Clyde was running out and uh, getting the golf ball and bringing it back, putting it at their feet and looking up, going, do that again. So I said, I do hope he hasn't spoiled your game. And instead of doing the gent thing and saying, no, not at all, this guy said, well, it has a bit really. I thought, oh, behave yourself. The dog's a genius. Your voice is amazing. You should be on the radio. Thank you, Bucky. I was wondering what to do when I grew up. And I thought, do you know, I might go on radio. So you've just given me an idea. Scotty McClue on the wireless. I think that sounds good. Your accent's a great character to it. You should be in the new, you should be the new Rab C. Nisbet. Was he posh, though? Would you describe Rab C. as posh? There we are. Uh, do you think China's more likely to invade Taiwan or Russia more likely to invade Ukraine? Well, China's track record, you know, is a little bit different from Russia's. Uh, from that point of view. But we need to keep talking because if you did go for an out-and-out -out nuclear war, the game's up anyway. Thanks for your wisdom, good sir. Not at all, UK196. Lovely to have you with us, I can tell you. Ah, I want you at my next dinner party. Trent, you're very, very kind. There we are. I have to say I, I, I am probably quite sought after for dinner parties. Not recently, because of the lockdown, that's all gone. But it'll come back. Uh, good day, Sir Scotty. Thank you, dear. Uh, can you tell us about Robinson Crusoe, Daniel Defoe? Yes, he was actually called Alexander Selkirk. And I think he was from London Lynx in Fife. And I'm almost sure there's a statue of Robinson Crusoe. Uh, through in uh, in London links. So there we are. So you're looking up Alexander Selkirk, Robinson Crusoe. It's a very, very good adventure, Daniel Defoe's adventure. Uh, Scotty, what's the difference between a radio and a wireless set? Well, a radio is really the term for what's been transmitted. So there you are. A wireless set is the piece of equipment that transmits it. But that's become mixed up, really, since the transistor radio. So there you are. You talked about radio, which was what was being transmitted. So BBC radio was what was being transmitted. And you could receive that on your wireless. Yes, but you could also receive every other station in the world. See, 100 years ago, this year, the BBC started. And it was the British Broadcasting Company with four employees. John Reith from Glasgow, whose family were Aberdonians, I believe. And um, a secretary for him. He was the general manager. And a program controller, although nobody knew what that was. And an engineer. Yeah, and they were with the corporation for a good long time. So I would say your what's now your radio, it's now got mixed up and you receive things on your radio. 
but radio is what's transmitted. A wireless is a wireless receiver, and it's wireless because the um, output comes through the airwaves. Isn't that beautiful? So it was actually, it's, it's, it's bang up to date technology, far more than the internet, which is actually wired technology. But the internet really started moving when they started using radio to transmit your internet. Uh, now, what have we got here? Lots of people. Hello, Scotty Buddy. Hello, Martin. Good morning. Susan says, Martin. Robert Scrimger. Good morning, Scotty. What was the first coal mine in Scotland? And what year was it opened? The first coal mine in Scotland. Ooh, I'll have a guess. It was in Lanarkshire and it was opened in 1648. Something like that. What about that? I love pancakes. Merry Christmas, Scotty. Thank you, Martin. Um, I love lemon cheesecake and strawberry cheesecake and Bonifi pie. I think it's, is it not Banoffi? Yes, Banoffi pie. I had a full English breakfast a few days ago. A uh, bowl of homemade soup, glass of water, Scottish water, or apple juice. What am I drinking? And no funny cracks, please. What is McClure drinking this morning? I think we should be told. Fantastic stuff. Morning from Ayrshire. That's the stuff. What I admire about the Scots is how they made the Romans turn turtle. Well, Sandwich, you see, the Romans brooked no opposition. And uh, Pilate was actually a Scot, Pontius Pilate. I think he was from Fortin Gaul in Persia, the home of the world's oldest yew tree. Lovely wee village in Persia, Fortin Gaul. And I think that's where Pontius Pilate came from. And they even used to say that the Royal Scots were um, Pontius Pilate's soldiers, right? But they were founded in, was it 1641? I think the Royal Scots, something like that. Um, but um, the Romans brooked no opposition, but they could not cope with the wild Scoti. Scoti, not Scoti McClue. They couldn't cope with the wild Scoti. It was Gore Glen near Newton Grange in Midlothian, Scotty, 1798. What did I say? 1698. And Gore Glen, Newton Grange. Well, it's not too far from Lanarkshire, so we'll go for that. If you go to Forth in Lanarkshire, Lanarkshire kind of extends almost into Edinburgh. <laughs> I know Newton Grange out uh, near Dalkeith, Newton Grange Village. And was that not where you had, was it the Lady Victoria Colliery? Was that right? Lady Victoria Colliery. Was that not Newton Grange? And is Newton Grange not where you've got the mining museum now? Uh, I've heard of him, but what did Crusoe actually do? Where did he go? He went on to an island in the South Seas. Is independence good for Scotland, Scotty? It, it could be in the right hands. There we are. So um, if, you, if you followed the way I'm talking, it could be very good for the Scottish economy. You see, the Scots should not be paying a penny for gas, apart from an administration fee because they own gas. You see what I mean? North Sea gas. Instead of ordering it up from Russia, should be getting it from the North Sea. So there's been a lot of uh, things messed up over the years that I would have put right. And they should have listened to the wonderful, wonderful economist, RGL Macron, Robert Gavin Loudon Macron, Gavin Macron, in 1975 with the Macron Report. Yes, but they kept that shtum because it would have shown you just how wealthy Scotland was and could be. So there you are. So Scotland is uh, one of the finest countries in the world, and it should be well clear of Westminster because they don't know how to run it. They know how to mug it, but they don't know how to run it. And that's the difference. There we are. It's sunny down in Ardrossan in Ayrshire. That's right, Scotty, Lady Victoria and the Mining Museum at Newton Grange. See, Robert, I'm not just an athlete, you know. There's more to old McClure than meets the eye. 
We're getting an awful lot of rain down here, so our how about over there? Geodog, are you getting a monsoon in South Africa? We've had a lot of rain, but we also had a wee bit of ice this week. I'm not so keen on the ice. Ice uh, can be an enemy, as you know. The Beatles or the Rolling Stones or the Who? All three. All three. My dear old friend who worked in television, lovely, lovely man. And he was in his studio one day, and these young guys came in and said, can we sit with you uh, because uh, we're waiting for an interview. This was in the early 60s. And they sat in. He went to the canteen and bought them tea and buns. And they loved chatting to him because anybody would. And uh, it turned out to be the Rolling Stones. We found out a while later it was the Rolling Stones. So there we are. Uh, there was this Englishman, Irishman, and Scotsman. Continue. Right, okay. There was an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman. Oh, and a Welshman. And they were all about to get clobbered. And the person that were going to clobber them said, Do you have a last wish and we shall grant it? So they had a last wish. So they asked the Welshman first. He said, I want a thousand voices from the valleys singing land of my fathers. He said, right, we'll arrange that. And they said to the Irishman, what about you? He said, I want a hundred Irish dancers dancing and dancing all the Celtic dances. He said, right, we'll arrange that. He said, what about you to the Scotsman? And the Scotsman said, I want a thousand bagpipers playing Scotland the Brave. He said, right, we'll arrange that. And they said to the Englishman, What's your last wish? She said, can you shoot me first? <laughs> Morning, Scotty. Thank you, do. Uh, so there we are. Lovely to have you with us, Trent. Do you think the government should keep the BBC? I hope we do. I don't want to see a bias. And he mentions another news channel. Yeah, but what about Good Evening here is the BBC, sponsored by McClue's Pies. Good evening. This is the BBC News, sponsored by McClue's Pies. You know, what would be wrong with that? Um, do you like a nice scotch? I used to sandwich fan, but I just gave up alcohol seven years ago on Christmas Day because I thought I want to drive my car at any time of the night, day or night. And I was trying to work out how many units and how long would it take to wear off. When would I be safe to drive? Blah, blah, blah. And I thought, do you know what? I don't need this. So I just chucked it. I didn't have to, but I did. Hot cross on and butter. Stop. It's named after Lady Montague Scott, the wife of the ninth Marquess of Lothian, who was chairman of the mine. There you go, Scotty. I'm an athlete as well. Now, let me see. Are you sure? Is the Marquis of Lothian not a care? Oh, I see. He married a Montague Scott. It was probably a Montague Douglas Scott who would be a daughter of the Duke of Buccleuch, the Marquis of Queensberry. Something like that. So there you are. Yes, because I think the Lothians, the name is Care. So there you are. And he was chairman and she was Lady Victoria. Was that right? How very interesting. You're a mind of information, Scotty. We have to be, David. Otherwise, who's going to educate the people? Television won't do it. The government won't do it. I could tell you that. Looks like a scrumpy drink. Yes, yes, yes. You're not far off. So what is it I am drinking? I think I know. Go on, Aidan, spill. Do you like porridge with salt? I've had salt in my porridge. You can have a knob. You can have a knob of butter in your porridge. You can have a little bit of sugar. I'm not so big on that nowadays because the sugar's not so good for you. You could have a spoonful of honey. Or you could just have milk or cream. There we are. Uh, porridge is a very personal dish. 
What is the stone of Skun? says Sandwich Face. The stone of Skun was where the original kings of Scotland were crowned at Skun Palace in Perthshire. And that was your king of Scotland. Yes, uh, your Bruce's and your Wallace, your Bruce, your Bruce, I should say, your Bruce's and what have you there. Uh, but Kenneth MacAlpin, the first king, was crowned at Danad Fort at Kilmartin in Argyll because he was the king of Dalriada or Dalriada. There we go. Uh, so the Stone of Scone is now known as the Stone of Destiny. And it's been given back to Scotland from Westminster Abbey because it was under King Edward's chair. So there you are. And they crown the joint monarch. I vote you as first minister. Thank you, Sandwich Face. Sandwich Face says you should do Jack and Ori. Jack and Ori, boom, boom. Please keep me in your prayers, says I walk with nature. I had a heart attack yesterday. I'm set to have bypass surgery soon. Now, walk with nature. I send you love. That's the first thing. I send you strength. I want you as calm and relaxed about this as possible. You're in the hands of experts. You've had a bit of a warning and it will get sorted. All right. So every strength to you, every love to you from all over the world. It's coming at you on Scotty McClure's TikTok Live. Scotty, are you for Derry next weekend for the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday? So there we are. Yes, is it Derry or London Derry? Somebody told me Derry is the only place where the first six letters are silent. We shall, uh, we shall see what's happening. Have you ever seen a stag on a mountain? Of course I have, Sandwich Face. I've seen many, many stags. I once was taken... Uh, by uh, an army major and his son on a deer stock. And we walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. This was my first deer stock. And um, I decided to blow my nose as we were walking on the moor, on the hill. So I gave it a... <laughs> and this was the major's face. Are you watching? Oh, so there we are. I think we lost our best politician years ago, Donald Dewar. Very good, big Donald. Lovely, lovely manners. Yes, brought up. His family were actually like mine originally from Argyle. There you are. And I think Donald's father was a doctor in one of these big houses out in the West End. And I think uh, Donald's father was a doctor, but he was a very, very nice man. Uh, Donald Dewar, and very, very much the gentleman. Glasgow Academy, Glasgow Academy. And uh, the member Labour Cow Cadens, which is where Scottish television was. And when Donald came into a recording studio, a television or radio studio, uh, they would say to him, good morning, uh, Mr. Dewar, good morning. And he would go, good morning indeed. That was Donald for you, great guy. Uh, a walk with nature, hope you're taking it easy, says you, Rosa. Uh, don't forget the proclaimers. You could never forget the proclaimers. Outstanding people. Craig and Charlie, I've been privileged to meet them both. There we are, fantastic. Can you sing us old Lang Syne? I certainly can. Yes, indeed. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot for old Lang Syne? That's it. There you go. Wonderful. And we'll be seeing it. For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll tack a cup of kindness yet. For old Lang Syne. Old Lang Syne, where does that come from? Well, it's really an old, long song. There we are. You see? An old, long song and old Lang since. Yes. So in other words, forever. For good. There we are. Old Lang Syne. For good, forever, for Lang Syne. For a long time. There we are. So that's kind of what it is. Are you a unionist or a nationalist? I uh, couldn't 
to be a unionist when I look. I've just been studying the union and how it was put together and the jiggery pokery. And Queen Anne, who was a bit of a rascal, actually, but she was a Stuart. She was the last of the Stuarts. She died in 1714. And um, Westminster was in a panic that we might end up with uh, with James II or his son, Bonnie Prince Charlie, because they were both excellent monarchs, you see. So Queen Anne really rigged the Union and bribed the, uh, the nobles who were short of money because they were fighting each other, you see. So that was it. I think she bought Scotland for about 1,500 quid. So that was that. And we sold out. And although there was poverty in Scotland, there was famine, there was suffering. Surprise, surprise. You know, same as today, there was that sort of austerity deficit. Uh, but the Scottish economy had to be seriously, seriously devalued to join the English economy to facilitate economic union. So I don't think anybody now with a clear conscience could ever be a unionist again if they knew what they were talking about. But independence does need careful negotiation. You see, Brexit was the straw that broke the camel's back. It Brexit, as we'd say in Scotland, Brexit was the worst act of self-harm since the First World War. That's caused a lot of the trouble. And then the pandemic came along, but the pandemic hasn't cost us anything like Brexit has. So there you go. Uh, hi, Scotty. Mac no clue. Oh, why do we say that, Kira? Yes, do justify yourself. There we are. And tell me what you think I wouldn't have a clue about. Uh, would your thoughts on independence change if the SNP controlled the UK? Well, I think a lot of people in England would actually like the SNP in power because they admire what it's done for Scotland. Very, very interesting. Your face has great character. I thank you very much. You're very kind. Thank you, Sandwich Face. Hi there. Right, Meister. How are you? How lovely to have you with us, and a big dinky do. Auld Lang Syne, my dears. Come on, let's sing it. No, we're a bit early. We need to sing it on, um, we need to sing it on Bums Day. All round the world, man to man, the world o'er shall brothers be for all that. In fact, Bums is very popular in Russia. And maybe all the Ukrainians and all the Russians and all the Americans and all the NATO countries should join hands and sing Auld Lang Syne. What about that? Man to man, the world o'er shall brothers be for all that. Just to celebrate Bums Night. The Union of 1707 in the long run opened Scotland up to the English foreign markets and trade. But what historians don't tell you, Scotland had been trading with the rest of the world for centuries. Robert Scrimger, you're correct. The trade it opened up with was nothing because Scotland was big trading with Europe, particularly the low countries. You go to East Lothian, you'll see on some of the roofs of the old cottages red pan tiles from Holland, Dutch tiles. So there you are. Scotland way, way ahead of the game. So there you are. It was Kerr, Scotty. Yes, I'm sure it was. Schomburg Kerr was the name of the Marquess of Lothian. Absolutely, Robert. And I think it was the Marquess of Lothian that was instrumental in getting Eric Liddell to meet with uh, King Edward VIII, the king that abdicated at the time, um, about running on a Sunday. Because Eric was a Christian, he wouldn't run on a Sunday. And they wanted him to run at the, well, it was the Olympics, wasn't it? On a Sunday, and he said no. He said, uh, you know, because Eric Liddell was an outstanding man, probably the greatest athlete that Scotland's ever produced. And it's produced a lot of athletes. You know, and uh, Eric Liddell said, um, God works through me, and when I run, I feel his power. You'll see it all in the film Chariots of Fire, with the music by Vangelis. It's outstanding. Nigel Havers in it as well. Just terrific. Uh, so wonderful, wonderful stuff. And um, 
Oh, Eric Liddell was played by Ian. Um, oh, super actor. It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. There we are. You're throwing all those things at me, you see. And we're live, broadcasting, live streaming. So, you know, they've got to come off the top of the head. Dinky do, Scotty. Is Scotch broth an authentic dish? Very, very much so. See, the word Scotch is really only used now for whiskey. It's an old-fashioned word for Scottish. But, no, you can also have a Scotch pie. So you'll see that. And you still have Scotch wool, I think, if I remember. And you've got Scotch Street in Carlisle. You know, that sort of idea. Uh, were you in Still Game? No, but they say I was the original inspiration for Still Game because Scotty McClue was so big with his bonnet before Still Game started. Are you a capitalist? Am I a capitalist? Um, I don't really, I'm not really big on usury. So I don't know where that comes in. Scotty, have you ever just been playing Lego? Oh, yes, Charlie, I like my Lego. There we are. Uh, do you think there's any product placement in the Lego movie? I love Marion and Fish. Brilliant. I know Fish. Very much so. And Marion, an outstanding band. Yes, I had the privilege of meeting Fish. What a top man. Scotty, uh, uh, oh yes, we've done that. Uh, now, what have we got here? Is it apple cider vinegar diluted? Aiden, you're 100% correct. Who said on juice chewy? Said orange juice. I see what you mean, Chewy. Yes, it could be fresh orange, but it's apple cider vinegar, heavily diluted. Always dilute vinegar, guys. Otherwise, you could burn your esophagus. Uh, there we are. Could you wear the Glen Gary tonight? Well, well, we'll we'll try and have it nearby, Martin. The Union of seventeen oh seven in the long run. Yes, we've done that one, haven't we? Fantastic. Any more chat from you lot? Uh, that's what it is. Do people ever call you the Dinkster Do? No, we tend not to. Because Dinky Do is heavily trademarked and copyrighted, we tend to um, just stick with Dinky Do. We don't like to spoil the brand. Are you a beekeeper? I've just started myself. No, but um, a gentleman I knew very well kept bees, and he said, I want to find out if you're brave. So he donned me with the white suit and the helmet and all that, the beekeeper's hat. And off we went down with the smoke gun to the hives. And um, this was my uh, second time to get bees. And he got stung and I didn't. He got stung in the nose. But when I was young, I stood on the alighting board of a hive when I was very young. And uh, a million bees went up my tartan trouser legs. And I was in quite a state. My face swelled up and my eyes narrowed. Uh, so it was very strange. But uh, the beekeeper came in and lifted with his thumbnail as many stings as possible. Aren't Scottish names awesome? Everything about Scotland is awesome. There we are. I think we can have that. That's, that's a fair comment. Uh, now, what have we got here? Now, Charlo... What you're doing now is spamming me, right? You're spamming me. So I can either ban you for life or you stop spamming. Uh, you look like you're losing weight, babe. I am, Jane, yes. Uh, we've uh, a fair bit of timber gone. I think four stone at the last count. So that's quite good, isn't it? That's uh, 40, 56 pounds I've lost. Um... He went to Danoon Grammar School. Who did? Hello, Scotty. How are you doing today? Lovely to see you on this lovely morning. Dinky do. Who went to Danoon Grammar School? John Smith did. Yes. Well, John Smith started off in a drishik. My mother taught him in Sunday school. And his father, Archie, was a schoolmaster uh, in a drishik. And I think then in Tarbot. I've been to Glen Mallon, a powerful mountain they speak of. Listen to loads of your older stuff on YouTube. You sound to posh out comparison. Right, Meister? How very interesting. Hello, Scotty. Much on the cars this weekend, Skater Boy. We've got the biggest thing ever to happen on the internet tonight at 9 o'clock. 
the internet phone in with Scotty McClue. One hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment with callers. So I would advise you to have a look at that. Good morning to Scotty. If Scotland became independent, we could start our own monarchy. No, Sean. We run with the monarchy. The monarchy, you split the parliament, you never, ever interfere with the crown. That's our symbol of authority. And the motto of the Scottish crown is Nemo me impun la kesset. War door meddle with me. So you never, ever touch the Scottish crown. You'll see it on Edinburgh Castle. And the crown's united in 1603. So Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, is our sovereign lady and head of state for Scotland. So you're looking at politics here. The crown is apolitical. You never, ever interfere with the crown. There we go. A very good morning to Scott. He says, David, hope you're well. Looking forward to the big one tonight. There. Thank you, David. Top man. There's Streaky Bacon says, hello, Scotty. Hello, Streaky. How lovely to have you with us, top man. Uh, totally agree, re-Brexit. I'm worried about the Northern Ireland truce. Well, yes, I think that uh, when you say truce, I think you mean agreement, Aidan. Um, and uh, I don't see that uh, last. I think, that, I think what's going to happen is Brexit's done two things. It's caused us economic annihilation. And the other thing, is, as well, it's done several things. It's taken us away from a seat at the big table, from controlling 30%, along with our dear friends and allies, Germany at the time, from controlling 30% of um, a market of 52 countries and 510 million people. So that was a wee bit silly. And we've not really got any trade deals to speak in and nothing that's better than what we had. So Brexit was a very, very bad move, uh, I have to say. Uh, but it will also, I think, result in the, uh, the um, political fragmentation of the United Kingdom. So I think we can kiss the UK bye-bye at some point. So there we are. Uh, David Cameron brought us gay marriage and Brexit. What a tough... Yes, indeed, but it was Boris that implemented the Brexit, you know. Uh, not a good thing. Are you English and proud? Well, I'm, pr I'm Scottish and proud. So there you are. You've got to remember the UK is four countries. So there we have. Follow us as soon as you can. Hello, Scotty. Not seen you for a while. Scottish Kev. Can you sing God Save the Queen instead? Of course we can. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what's the best thing about Robert the Bruce? He was on the run in Tarbot in Argyll, where to this day you'll see Bruce Hill. And he was, I think, round the West Loch hiding. And he was starving to death. And a female goat came along and let Bruce suckle her. And he got the goat's milk and survived very healthy. And he decided that when he became king again, he would free all goats to roam freely throughout Scotland. And if you're driving round bits of Argyle, you'll see wild goats on the road. Beautiful. We love it. So I would say that's one of the best things about Robert the Bruce. Robert D. Bruce. And the Bruces are a lovely, lovely family to this day. Uh, you sound posh compared to your older videos. Oh, well, it just depends who we were talking to at the time, I think. I'm in bed, mate, resting. I was in a bad car crash. Scottish Kev, you need to be careful. Can we sing God Save the Queen on Buns Night? Uh, not on Bun. Well, you could actually because Buns was actually quite a unionist in his own way. You know? He just taught the unions, I would have said. He was, uh, he was very much respected by the establishment, put it that way. So there you are. And he worked for the government, of course. Chris Grant has sent us beautiful TikToks. Chris Grant, thank you so much for your outstanding kindness and generosity. That goes for all you TikTokers. There we are. So good of you. We're going to have to go, guys. What is the heart of the Lothian? Well, it's actually the heart of Mid Lothian, and it's Walter Scott. 
uh, that great romantic writer. Can you say hello to my friend Andreas? I can, Andres. Is he, are you Greek, Andres? Yasu, Yasu. Ah, uh, Calamera, Calamera. Moderate cap capitalism's great. It's just gone too far. Uh, it's gone a bit too far, Aiden. Yes, we need to get the money back. We've just given the elites all our money because they own the big pharmaceutical companies. And we've just given them all our money. Encourage your viewers. Uh, dinky do we will. Chocho. Yes, did you like him? Morning, Scotty. Hope you're well, sir. Hello, Husey. Uh, what have we got here? The concept of Brexit is that you endure short-term pain for long-term gain. But I don't see it happening, though, neither do I, Robert, to be honest. I think that lowering public spending, lowering taxes and continued government deregulation grows your economy in the long term. We have COVID as well as Brexit to pay for for decades. Well, Brexit, the last time I looked at the bill, it was over £250 billion. Pounds. And the bill for the pandemic is £150 billion. Pounds. Now, by my mental arithmetic, that's £400 billion pounds of British taxpayers' money we've got to find for nothing, really. Do you know what I mean? So there's there's four hundred billion gone somewhere. Aidan says, uh, "Was Logie Beard Scottish? It's a great name. Yes, he was very much. John Logie Beard. He was from Helensburgh, and he attended the Royal Technical College at the same time as John Reith of the BBC." There were John Logie Beard. John Logie Beard, he just died. He moved down south. I think he lived in... Uh, where did Logie Beard live? Was it somewhere like Portsmouth? I can't remember. But anyway, he moved down south. His television was not actually adapt uh, adopted. Yes, the Beard system wasn't adopted. But I can remember Beard televisions. Uh, so there you are, John Logie Beard, great guy. Uh, John Smith was the best. I played at his memorial service on Westminster Abbey. Beautiful daughters, yes, Sarah and his other daughter, I'm trying to remember, and Elizabeth, his wife. Lovely family, the Smiths. Very, very nice people. And as I say, my mother knew John very, very well. Sorry for repeating the comment. I lost connection. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, all right. No problem, right, Master. We'll let you off because we're very good that way. Guys, it's nearly time I wasn't here. Um, What have we got here? Yellowstone. Yes, Streaky Bacon, Yellowstone Park. Uh, morning, Scotty. You don't sound Scottish, pal. Mate, you obviously don't have much experience of Scots. There we are. This is the way we all speak. That's not true at all. The UK now trades on misplaced sense of superiority. That's just England. There we are. Quite right. You tell them, Tard, needing sleep. Evening, Lord Duke of Dundee, Onion Badgie, down under in Australia. We love having you with us, and dinky do. Thank you, Chris Grant, for my beautiful. Uh, Buns, he was also a Freemason. Yes, I believe he was. I've seen pictures of him. Uh, there's, there's some famous pictures of him. And uh, Scotland for independence, not a royalist, never will be. God bless Bonnie Prince Charlie. Well, Bonnie Prince Charlie was a royal, so you're obviously a royalist if you're blessing Bonnie Prince Charlie. So you're a royalist. That's what you are. Don't try and get out of it. And independence has nothing to do with the monarchy. All right. So you are, like all Scots, a true royalist. What's your favourite part of Ireland? All of it. Every single blade of grass. I loved going right down to the south to Clonakilty, the Ring of Kerry. Uh, you know, I like up at the north, the Giant's Causeway, Donaghadi, all that sort of stuff. Bally Castle. Uh, Sir Walter Scott, no chance, says uh, Mac. Why are you on about Mac? Are you talking nonsense again? The king over the water. There we are. Sir Walter Scott. Ah, oh, fantastic. Scotty, what's your favourite desert? Well, I suppose it's between the Sahara and the Kalahari. 
You know, we need to work out. But I'm not a great desert man. I prefer fresh, fragrant Scottish rain and drinking pure Scottish water. Also, you can dilute your apple cider vinegar with it. Mm. Tremendous. 80% of wealth owned by 1% of the population is wrong. Storing up in offshore hedge funds. Yes, Aidan, I don't know why they are doing that. Because as my wonderful, wonderful father, a very wise man, once said to me, uh, you can only wear one suit. I suppose they like being powerful and having control over all the little earthlings, but they will pop their clogs and God will be having a very serious one with them. Because as the Bible tells us, do not store up treasure on earth. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I have here, I can't get it for you because it's high up, very high ceiling here. But it says, and this is a quote from my grandmother, a good name is better than great riches. So there you are. Absolutely. So take that on board, guys. Dink it out. I see. Dessert. Rather, excuse my spelling. Oh, sorry. Uh, my favorite dessert. I do like a steam pudding and custard. A touch of the spotted dick. Uh, what else do we have? Baked Alaska. Sticky toffee pudding. Knickerbocker glory. Um... What else do we like as a sweet? Plain ice cream or vanilla chocolate and strawberry, three scoops, and a little wafer. Uh, what else can we have? Fresh fruit salad, um, Christmas pudding, proper Christmas pudding, and cream and brandy butter. Stop! Uh, caramel cake melting in a bit of custard, yum. Chocolate fudge cake. Now you're talking. Not all Scottish are royalists. And yes, Bonnie Prince Charlie was royal. But he fought for independence. Well, no, he fought for the throne of Britain. So he wasn't fighting for independence. He was fighting to put a Stuart back on the throne. Either his father, King James II, or himself. So there we are. Because King William was a baddie. And I'm beginning to think Queen Anne was a baddie as well. A lot to do with her upbringing, you see. Very poor parenting. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, so yes, no, all Scots are royalist at heart, if you put it to the test. You know, and Her Majesty the Queen is our sovereign lady and the head of state for Scotland. Not a problem, I say. So there we go. But they, they, they confuse independence, as you have done, Right in front of us here, user 6417, you've actually confused independence, which is to do with parliamentary business. You're talking about splitting the parliaments, not the crown. Don't touch the crown. You see, because we've only got a Scottish parliament by um, the gracious permission of Her Majesty the Queen. Have you got that? I've missed your wee face, Scotty. We Mrs. Woman. I see you upset a wee Scottish chicken. Oh no, Jack, I'll tell you. I, uh, I could not believe that shocking, shocking language coming from that person's mouth. And I could not believe how poor an advert or an ambassador they were for LBGTQ. Just shocking, shocking. There we are. Uh, you know, they've set that cause back, I would say. So there we are. Anyway, we had to ban them and we had to put the comments off the video just because there were such dirty, filthy, foul mouth middens coming on. Dirty wee middens. So there you are. They, they, they weren't even able to argue their case. So, I, I you know, you, you think to yourself, well, what is your case? Because I can argue mine. Yes, I can see your point of view if you can't see mine. Fantastic. Bonnie Prince Charlie did not fight for independence. But what the Stuarts wanted was a multi-confederational monarchy. A lot of Jacobites, as you know, Scotty, were anti-union. 
Yes, they were, Robert, but with good cause. Because the union did dreadful things. In fact, I think we should actually get money from Westminster for reparation of damages at Culloden and rebuild Linlithgow Palace, which was sacked just before the battle by uh, the king's brother, uh, the Duke of Cumberland, Stinking Billy, William Duke of Cumberland, a real baddie. Uh, you know, so there we are. Uh, so I think, yes, there's a lot to be done and... Uh, uh, the Jacobites should never, ever have been treated like that because they were just Jacobus followers of James. That's what it is translated. Body Prince Charlie, who is now buried in the Vatican. So they are. So they weren't anti-Union. Um, a lot of the government troops, they were, they were anti-Catholic. That was what was going on because uh, they thought Body Prince Charlie. But you see, what a lot of people don't realize, America was not always wanting to be a republic. They wanted a monarchy, and they offered it to Bonnie Prince Charlie. What about that, guys? Now, who have we got here? Scotty, how are you, son? Lovely to see you on this fine morning. Click start. I thank you. Kenny says, morning, Scotty. I'm glad I woke up in time to hear some Scottish history from you. When we'd be travelling to Highland Games, my late dad, he was a piper. Uh, brackets, close brackets, would tell me about where we were. I miss it. Yes, indeed. And my father was a piper, and of course, I was privileged to be the chieftain of the Bales Den and Mulgai Highland Games in 2007. Fantastic honour, really was. I say thank you to those who wanted me to be the chieftain of the Highland Games. And you'll see pictures on the TikTok videos, guys. I'm going to have to dash. I've just realized the time. I'm going to do some swimming in the bathgate dance. You're over there. No, we, Mrs. Woman, you be careful. Not she. Good morning, the bear's den. We, Mrs. Woman. Dinky do you. You be careful. Never keen on wild swimming unless it's in a, a nice shallow pool in a highland river. You just sit there and let the water flow. <laughs> Gives you a right good clean out. Now, there you are. What we'll do with you, big job, is just ban you for life. Because you are obviously a half-wit. Uh, so there we are. So we'll just ban you for life. There we go. That's gone. Fantastic. I thank you. And that's the end of him. Uh, I love the cold water wakes you right up. It certainly does, we Mrs. Women. Anyway, I hope I've wakened everybody right up this morning. You beautiful TikTokers, thank you for the 5,400 likes. Thank you for coming and joining us. And uh, you says, I disagree with you, but you're a good man. It's good listening to you. All the best. Yes, you too, but you don't need to disagree. I'm just giving you the facts. You're awesome, says Sandwich Face. So are you, Sandwich Face. Dinky do. I'll sing you the goodbye song. Are we ready? Join in. <clears throat> goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. A vita zen, a revoir, and a cheery o. Dinky do, my lovelies. Join us tonight on TikTok and the YouTube channel for the internet phone in 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Scotty, have a fab day. No problem, we Mrs. Women. And a big dinky do to you, my darling. There we are. Fantastic.